Today, I'm gonna take you through the most neglected aspect of playing good pickleball. I'm talking about your footwork and positioning. The truth is that most players are so worried about hitting the ball that they rarely pay attention to what's going on with their feet. If you aren't moving your feet right though, you're never gonna reach your full potential as a player. But the good news is that you can implement all the tips I'm about to go through right away. They don't require practice. So let's get started. And if you're new to our channel, make sure to subscribe so that you see every time we post a new video. If you're trying to improve your pickleball game, you need to study the proper technique and strategy, and our channel is the best way to do that. Your footwork at a pickleball point starts right after you hit your serve. After the serve, the next shot that you're gonna get is called your third shot, right? You probably know that. What is the goal with our footwork for our third shot? The goal is to get yourself in a position so that you can move forward through the ball. Okay, you never want to be leading to the side, falling over like this. So this is, would be bad. That would be a bad third shot, right? Generally on your third shot, you're either hitting a drive or a drop. So if you're hitting a drop, you need a lot of accuracy. So if you're falling over to the side, like I just did, it's gonna be really hard to consistently get your ball to land in the kitchen. And if you're hitting a drive and you're trying to go harder and lower, it's just gonna be hard to keep the ball low and stay accurate on that shot if you're not in the right position. So you hit your serve, step one is that you want to back up a little bit, right? You wanna get behind that baseline because you have to let that ball bounce so there's not really any reason to be standing inside. So you're gonna hit your serve and usually take a little bit of a step back like this. When you're in this position, you're gonna see where the third shot is going. And when you see this, it's your goal to get there early. So you don't wanna move late, you wanna get there as quickly as you can and you do that like this. So I moved quickly, just take a few steps. But the key is that when you get into position, you actually should take a few extra adjustment steps so it's perfect. You're trying to catch the ball out in front to the side of your body like this. Not like this, not like this. So you might need to take a few little adjustment steps to get that ball perfect. So I hit a drop there. There, I hit a drive. What you wanna avoid though is being lazy. So after I hit my serve, I'm low, I'm on my toes, and I'm ready for that next shot. So this is an example of what you don't wanna do. I hit my serve, I'm on my heels, kind of on my back foot, reaching for the ball. That's just gonna make everything more challenging. If the return is short, I move in quickly, get behind the ball, and if the return is deep, I back up, give myself space so that I can move forward through my shot. The goal is that you can always move forward through your third shot. What's your goal after you hit your third shot? Your goal is to try to move forward, but you shouldn't move forward if you didn't hit a good one. You should only move forward off of a good third shot. But what is a good third shot? Look at these two pictures and try to determine which would be a better opportunity to move forward. Usually a good third shot means that you force your opponent to have to hit up on the ball. So that first example was a good opportunity to move forward. And the second example where I have a higher ball would actually be a bad opportunity to move forward because when it's high, I had the opportunity to hit it down right at my opponent's feet. So that would not be a good time to come in. So when it comes to moving forward off of your third shot, think of your opponent getting a low ball as a green light and your opponent getting a high ball as a red light. So when you hit your third shot well, and you force your opponent to hit up on the ball, what you wanna do is you wanna start creeping forward. And your goal is to eventually make it to the kitchen and get into a neutral position where you're dinking or doing whatever up here. But along the way in, you may need to hit a few shots. So let me show you how that looks. So as you saw, as I was progressing towards the kitchen, I had to hit a few shots in this area, which is called the transition zone. Those shots that I hit are called resets because I dropped them into the kitchen. So the footwork that you want to use on those shots, let's say I just hit my third shot, I want to start creeping forward nice and low. And as my opponent's making contact, I want to do something called the split step. So the split step is where I jump into a wide base that lets me explode and lunge in either direction. So it's a lot easier to move laterally when I have this wide base than if I was standing straight up and I was still moving forward with my momentum. So as you're going forward, you always want to use the split step. Let me show you another example.
So by using that shot, I essentially stop my momentum and it makes it a lot easier for me to stay in balance and have good control on those resets. If you've played tennis, you've definitely seen the split step because in tennis, you're actually taught the split step for every shot. All right, let's see some examples of what that would look like in real time. Use my drop, start to move forward, split for my reset, and I'm in, in a neutral position. Well, that one had a little bit too high, so I'm gonna stay back, still too high, but I'm able to get in there, split step for my reset. Oh, and I just missed it. I was a little bit lazy there with my footwork. You saw I was reaching a little bit on that drop, so it should have looked more like this. Split step, lunge, and I would have gotten in. Here I got a little bit of a deeper turn, so I back up. A little bit far on my reset. Takes me a few shots to get in, but I got in in a neutral position. So like I said, it's totally fine if it takes you a few shots to move forward, as long as you're on balance and using your split steps. An important thing to keep in mind, guys, is that none of this stuff I'm showing you right now is that hard to get the hang of. You just need to make sure that when you're playing, you're actually thinking about it every single point. It's really easy to get lazy, get on your heels, and play a bad point because you're not thinking about moving your feet well. Another thing to consider is that as you're moving forward, your partner generally should be mirroring your movement. So you don't want them to stay back while you're moving up, that's bad. So make sure to send this to your partner so that they know all this footwork stuff and you can play dynamic together as a team. So if you do the footwork of moving forward right, hopefully you can make it safely to the kitchen. When you get here though, the footwork is completely different. I'm gonna go over that, but first I need to teach you how to move when you're returning. Watch closely, which of these two returns looks better? If you said the second example looked better, you're right. The main aspect of our footwork that we need to focus on on a return is moving forward through the ball. And there's a few reasons for this. When you're moving forward through the ball, it makes it a lot easier to use a compact motion. So, see I don't have to take much of a swing when I hit my return, because a lot of my power is coming from my motion through the ball. The other reason why moving forward is beneficial is that your number one goal after your return is to get to the kitchen line as quickly as you can so that you can dominate from the net. By getting your momentum going forward through the shot, you get there that much faster. Look how much faster I can get in by moving forward through the shot, like this, versus hitting the ball while staying still, then moving forward. It takes me almost twice as long to get in. One of the most important aspects to being able to move forward is sometimes giving yourself a little bit of space behind the back line in terms of where you're waiting. If your opponent's serving really hard, it's challenging to move forward if you're standing right on the baseline and the ball might literally land behind you. So you be the judge, and if your opponent's serving hard, give yourself some space and you could still move forward through that shot. I'm not talking about like 10 feet behind the baseline, but give yourself maybe three feet behind the baseline, right about here, and that way you can move forward and make contact with the ball as you're going in. After you hit the ball, it's equally important to what you're doing before you hit the ball. So when you hit your return, what you don't wanna do is just casually stroll up to the kitchen line and get there on your own time. You have a limited amount of time till your opponent hits their third shot. So you wanna get in very fast so that you're in the optimal position when they're doing that. So after you hit the return, you wanna move in with a sense of urgency. So I try to get in pretty quickly because I don't want to be back here when my opponent hits their third shot. I wanna be right here so I can take the ball out of the air and I'm in a more aggressive position. This is why you have an advantage as the returner because you have the ability to move forward first. So you wanna take advantage of that by getting in quickly. And usually guys, when you get in quickly, you wanna jump into your split step right as your opponent is hitting their shot. This puts you in the best position to react to a drive if they're going hard and to react to a drop if they choose to use that. So let's see some examples. We're playing skinny singles cross court with just two of us, but pretend we have partners and we're playing doubles. So I'm gonna start a little bit farther back because I know Drew has a hard serve, so I wanna give myself some space. And that lets me move forward through the ball where I split when I get in. Now we both got into that dinking situation. So remember, after you hit that return, move forward with that sense of urgency and jump into that split step right behind the line. What you don't wanna do is move slowly to where you have to hit that volley from a little bit farther back. Odds are if you're back here, you're gonna have to hit it from a lot lower. You're probably not gonna be on as good of balance. Definitely don't wanna be moving forward through the ball. So get in quick, split right behind that kitchen line so you're in the best possible position to hit a good volley. 
And guys, at the end of this video, I'm gonna go over my top five footwork and positioning hacks that 95% of players don't know. First though, I need to teach you how to move while you're up here right behind the kitchen line. How do you move your feet when you're at the kitchen? Well, depending on your level, what's going on while you're at the kitchen is probably gonna be a lot different. So for most players, probably between the 3.0 to 4.0 level, usually when you're up, your opposing team is back. It's a lot less likely that you're gonna get into a dinking situation. And a lot of the time, you're playing against bangers or people who hit really hard. So you need to have the best possible footwork to beat bangers. So, how do you move your feet while well, you're up and your opponents are back? One, you wanna have a low, wide base like this and you wanna be on your toes. This puts you in the best possible position to move like this so that you can cover your whole side of the court. Let me show you how that looks. As you see, I'm in a really stable position, which lets me cover all of my opponent's shots. What you don't want to do is take a bunch of steps, move out of position. You definitely don't want to back up like I just did. Try to hold your ground here as best as you can. So a big thing when you're at the kitchen is that when it comes to your footwork, less is more. You don't want to be taking a ton of steps you wanna be on balance so that you can focus on reacting to hard shots with your volleys. And if you have trouble beating bangers, we actually just made a full video on that if you wanna check it out. And once you start to get more advanced, you're gonna to start to get into more dinking rallies like this. And when you're in a dinking rally, generally what your opponent's trying to do is move you around and get you off balance so that you pop the ball up. So it's super important that you know how to move your feet when you're in this type of situation. So the main thing to consider, same as we just talked about, Less is more. You don't want to be taking a ton of steps. Generally, you want to take one big step in either direction. You always want to recover back to that neutral position. So, you don't want to go like this. You're only covering 10 feet, right? Your side is usually 10 feet. So, big step in either direction is usually good enough to cover about 90% of your side of the kitchen. So, let me show you how that looks. I very rarely need to take multiple steps. So you see, Usually I'm able to stay square to the court, take one step to either side. You probably already know this, but when you're up here, it's almost always better to try to take balls out of the air than to back up to let them bounce. So let's see how that looks. See, I'm able to bend down and get that ball out of the air. This is infinitely better than me taking a bunch of steps back and potentially popping the ball up. If you end up needing to go back, it's always best to just do a little pivot like this, hit your dink, and then come back to your neutral position. So you'll see that one I maybe couldn't have taken out of the air. So I pivot back like that, and it makes it a lot easier than if I'm taking all these steps just to take a dink where I need to go back anyway. So pivot and come back if you need to, but ideally, you're getting low with your legs and taking the ball out of the air. And if you think these tips are gonna help you, make sure to like this video and comment if you have any questions. I'll try to respond to every question myself. But now, we've arrived at my top five footwork and positioning hacks that you have to know if you wanna be an advanced player. This is gonna be a quick section, so pay close attention. One, if you're ever at the kitchen and you find yourself in a bad situation, meaning you probably gave your opponent a high, easy shot, you don't wanna just stand here. It's always better to take a quick step back and give yourself that little bit of extra time so that you can react quickly. So, if I notice that my opponent has a high shot, I don't have enough time to back up all the way, but I do have enough time to take one quick step back, which would look like this. Gives me enough time to react, and I'm still in the point, which is infinitely better than staying up and not having enough time to react and missing the ball. Let's see one more of those. So by backing up there, give myself that just a little bit of extra time that I needed to stay in the point. At number two, you wanna make sure that before every point, you move your feet a little bit so that you get yourself going. If I go into my return like this, is this really a good position to be active and get in quickly? No, usually you wanna go bounce around a little bit because an object in motion tends to stay in motion. So if you force yourself to move a little bit before every point, it's gonna remind you that you need to be moving throughout the point too. So this applies to your serve as well. If I'm about to serve, I can do a little bit of footwork and I'm just gonna be more active throughout my points because I'm reminding myself subconsciously 
that I need to be active. If you watch the pros, you'll notice they do this all the time because it works. My number three hack for footwork is shading. So when you and your partner are both up at the kitchen, it very rarely is optimal to be standing directly in the center of your box. Usually what you want to do is follow the ball. So when you're up here, you shift towards the direction of the ball so that you cover the court in the best possible way. So if my ball is over there, if I hit to that side of the court, me and Drew are generally gonna shift over a little bit like this so that he can cover the line and I covered the middle, okay? It's very unlikely they're gonna hit a super hard shot into that section of the court. And if they do hit it there, it's probably gonna be slow and it's usually gonna be a drop. So I have enough time to shift over and get that. So same thing applies to the other side of the court. If we were to hit over there, we're going to shift towards that direction too. He'll cover the middle and I'll cover the line. This just makes everything so much easier and you're gonna have to move a lot less while they're hitting their shot. Our number four hack is to stretch a little bit before you play. This makes so much of a difference. Think, how many times have you gone out for your first game of the day and you just feel a little bit stiff and you never really get you know, into your rhythm of moving because you feel tight, you're kind of worried you might pull muscle. Well, the solution to that is to stretch for a little bit before you play. So I'm not talking about static stretching where we hold each position for 30 seconds. Usually you want to do what's called a dynamic warm up, where you do quick little stretches like I just did there for my hamstring. And by doing this, you get your muscles ready to go and you warm them up. There's tons of videos on the internet if you need to learn how to do a dynamic warm up. Our number five tip is that a lot of the time, you may not be fast enough to react to your opponent's shot, especially when you're on defense. But what you can do is what's called guessing. So this is a really common thing in tennis and in pickleball. But let's say you give your opponent a really high, easy shot at the kitchen and you know they have two options of where they can hit it, right? Or at least two options that you'll return. So if I'm standing here, my opponent's probably gonna either aim right down the middle or go for this angled shot. And what I can do as a smart player is if they have that easy shot, maybe I've noticed that they really like to go down the middle. Or maybe I've noticed there's just a bigger gap down the middle. What I can do is actually start to move more towards that direction and put myself in a better position to return that shot. So that's called guessing. I would only do this though if you're in a position where you really think there's a low chance that you were to get that ball back if you weren't to guess. So let me show you how that looks. So I give my opponent a nice high ball. Oh, and I see there I guessed wrong, right? I moved towards the middle because I thought he was gonna go there, but he actually went for that angle. So let's see if I can guess right. Either way though, it doesn't matter because I wouldn't have gotten that shot anyways. So you're sort of just guessing. It's like a gamble, but if you guess right, you stay in the point, so it's worth it. So you see there, I did guess right. I moved out for that angle, and I was able to get it because I was in the right position. If I was standing here, that would have been a lot harder to get. I probably would have had to hit it something like this, and I probably would have missed a shot. A lot of these tips that we just went through are gonna be extra important when you're playing bangers or players who hit really hard. We actually made a full video on how to beat those types of players, so check it out.